Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of The Edmo Show. How are you all doing today? So, of course, as you guys see, the uh, if you guys are watching us on YouTube, because yes, we are streaming live on YouTube and Instagram. If you guys are watching us live on YouTube and you notice this, Before, oh, ooh, geez, I just spilled some coffee. Oh, wow. I didn't notice I had a stain on me. All right, don't, don't worry about that. It's, you know, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. So, but before we get into anything, let's get a word from our first sponsor. As an American citizen, we have this thing called the Constitution. And within that Constitution, we have what is called the Second Amendment, which acknowledges your rights to keep and bear arms. If you live in the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area, and you want to learn from the professionals, contact my friends at FTI, Firearms Training Incorporated, where you will get basic safety, marksmanship training, concealed carry training, certifications, recertification, stop the bleed, and much more. Just go to FTIgun.com and schedule your class today. So... Yes. So today, oh my goodness. So first of all, before I before I get into uh into the episode, I want to apologize for not having uh for not having uh the struggle on Friday because last week uh the missus she was struggling. She's still she's getting over it now, but the missus wasn't too well last week. Um so of course, you know, Hubsters had to had to had to take care of her. So, you know, that, that, what, what are good husbands and best friends for, you know? Um, so it, it just kind of came out of nowhere. She had like this weird cough and, you know, she, it, it was just bad. It was, no, it was not COVID. Uh, she was tested. She tested negative, but for whatever reason, she just has this weird lingering cough, you know? And I kind of looked at her like the, like the butt wad that I am. I was like, well, you know, you can still catch a cold, right? So... <laughs> So of course, you know, I, I think I think she just has a head cold. You know, um, she she's just been saying how she she's not feeling her best. She just has like this weird cough and phlegm that just does not want to leave. So that's that's what that's all about. So um, so yeah, so so I apologize for not having the struggle on Friday because the wife was struggling. So you know, I figured y'all can go a Friday without me. I'm pretty sure most of you people that aren't really into the Bible like that. I'm pretty sure you didn't care, but, you know, but for those of us who actually enjoy it, you know, it, it was definitely a tough one. So, the Tender Swindler. Oh, my goodness. So, no, this is not one of those new movies out in theaters. Um, the Tender Swindler, actually, my wife had told me about it. She, uh, I was at work one night, and she was just like, hey, babe, whenever you get a chance, or whenever you get home, I want you to watch this movie. And so literally, like, it was like a couple of days. My wife kept egging me on about it. So finally, on like our, our blessed Sundays, when we got together, we, you know, we went out. We had uh, it, we had to get some some DoorDash and we just kind of stayed in the house and we watched this movie. Oh, my God. Well, it's not really a movie. It's a documentary. But oh, my God. Oh, it was glorious it was very interesting um not too often do you find documentaries that are very engaging like movies they really shot it as if it was a movie and it was really really good like it was it it had like it had me on the edge of my seat I, i'll say that it, it definitely had me like sitting there like mouth dropped and i'm like what in the hell is going on so Let's go ahead and uh, let me first let me show you guys the trailer. You can find a bit of everything on Tinder, but I apologize for those of you that are on Instagram. Go to YouTube and watch. Can change your life. I only miss you when it rains. When I first talked with Simon, immediately we had a bond. When I listen to the radio. He was smart and funny and very impulsive. So, the first thing that I noticed about this movie was it was kind of giving me 50 shades of gray type vibe. 
like in the trailer and then watching it and then all hell of course like all hell breaks loose but i shared my whole heart with him and then he asked me if i wanted to travel with him on a private jet i was like shit he took me to a five-star hotel he said we had a special connection it felt like stepping into a movie and then in the middle of the night he said there was something he wants to tell me he said he has threats against him he needs so just so you guys, like, if you guys aren't, because the Instagram viewers and the podcast listeners, they just showed a clip, and this guy is, he claims to be the son of a billionaire. And he's he's whining and dining these women, and then it's like all hell starts breaking loose. Uh, and they're doing, just to give you guys context, like, this is happening all in Europe. Like, this is, like, happening between London and... The Netherlands, um, Germany, like it's it's all over Europe. And, and it's this one guy, this one guy. So um cash. Twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand, one hundred forty thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, thirty thousand dollars, a hundred and forty thousand dollars is what like this dude is like raking in. His life depended on me. That's when police tell me. The man I love was never real. Everything's a lie. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh oh, sorry. Um, let me let me go back. So from the makers of Don't Fuck with Cats. Oh my God. Go and watch it. Oh, if you want to die, if you want to watch something that's just as good as this, and we'll have you, whoever the team is who made Don't Fuck with Cats. Oh my God, like that. Whatever they make, I'm watching it. I'm just going to let you guys know, know right now, especially with the Chris Rock hands, because y'all know I'm serious. Anytime I do the Chris Rock's hands, I'm serious. It, if you guys, it, it, anything that comes from the people who don't fuck with cats, and I, let me see. Let me let me pull up right now. Who is the don't fuck with cats? Let me see. Don't F star CK with cats producers. Because Don't Fuck With Cats was a, was a really good, like, oh, executive producer, Dimitri Daganis, Adam Hawkins, producer, Felicity Morris, um, production company, Raw TV. Man, man, oh, man. Oh, who? anytime I see anything that's affiliated with Don't Fuck With Cats, I'm watching it. Because Don't Fuck With Cats was, uh, was raw. It was gritty. It was like... It had me on the edge of my seat, and this this docu movie had me on the edge of my seat too. It's well written, it's well researched, it's well uh, edited. Oh my goodness! Like you gotta watch it. Who is this guy I've been sharing the same bed with? Then I get these threatening messages. Take my advice. Just watch out. We have no idea what he's capable of. It's just been fucking hell. I'm just freaking out. But we needed to get Bay back. Yeah. So the documentary surrounds primarily three women. And these three women are affiliated or are in close proximity to the tender swindler. And two of them he's dating. Well, one of them he's dating hardcore, the other one he just met, and the other one he tried to date, and then she was like, no. But he kept her as a friend. So, oh, but the movie, or the docu-movie surrounds these three women. I forgot their, I forget their names, because they all got very Croatian, European names. Um, That sounded so mean. I apologize. I didn't mean to be that mean. But <laughs> they all have these names, you know. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Because I think uh, Rotten Tomatoes has their... No. Hmm. 
get this real quick. Uh, Elaine, uh, okay. I think that's. Uh, let me see. The Guardian. I think I have that article up. Let me go ahead and just share this with you guys. So, Rotten Tomatoes gave in 95. Fan audience score gave it 81. Okay, that seems fair. Uh, let me see. Hmm. Yeah, so the movie info is posing as a wealthy jet-setting diamond mogul, a man woos women online, then cons them out of millions of dollars. Now some victims plan for payback. It was good. Let me see. So let's go here, which I don't know if I'm going to watch this, Bel Air. I don't know. Because, I, you know, that's really off topic, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> for those of you that are, that are uh, watching this on Instagram and and listening to it on um, the uh, on the podcast, they got the picture of Peacock is advertising the new Bel Air, but which is supposed to be the remake of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Uh, first of all, I'm getting so tired of remake culture. Like it is, just create new content from scratch. It's not that hard. There's plenty of ideas out there, and it's like when I watch the trailer, it's like I, I feel kind of torn because like, do I want to watch it? Do I not want to watch it? It just seems too serious. And I grew up on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So, all right. So this is the article from Deadline.com. Exclusive. Look at, looks like viewers are swiping right on Tinder Swing with the Netflix original documentary that has landed top of the stream, streamer's weekly film viewing charts. The movie clocked 4.5 million hours viewed globally across the, the week January 31st to February 6th the hit, and hit the top 10 in 92 countries at the time of the writing of writing this from the UK, the film was sat uh, was sat top of the country's Netflix charts. Director Felicity Morris and produced by Raw, AGC Studios, and Gaspin Media, the Tender Swindler follows a group who teams to, who team together to take revenge after being the victims of an online dating con. The film only released February 2nd, so the numbers represents only five days of viewing. Also in the top uh, of the top three this week uh, was Home Team, uh, 33.6 million, and Despicable Me 2, 14.3 million. The numbers were impressive, but don't come close to the success by Don't Look Up earlier this year. Okay, I don't really care about that, which took advantage of the film Hungry Holiday Season uh okay i just want more all right yeah they they didn't really talk too much about it see the guardian so the guardian oh my god this was such a excuse me as i'm scratching my eye uh i think i already yeah i already got that one open i don't understand why i made that twice trying to All right. Meanwhile, all right. Uh, Aileen and Pernilla and Sis and Cicely. Um, these are the three women that were in the that were like the premise of or the the basis behind the tennis swindler. Now, let me go ahead and okay. So, and this is the guys, or that was one of his aliases, Simon Lee uh, Levive. Um, so what is Simon Levive, Netflix tender swindler doing right now? Yada, yada, yada. I don't want to go into that because I don't want to spoil it for you, even though the movie's been out about a couple weeks now. So, all right. So watching this movie and just, and, 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 oh, like the timing couldn't be better. The timing just could not be any better because as, as though, for those of you that are watching this uh, on the live, it is Valentine's Day. So, you know, no, I did not plan that. It just, I just kind of realized it once I started to, like thinking about it because me and the wife just watched it. So, but pretty much this guy, this guy pretends to be the son of a, of a diamond mogul. 
and he's jet setting across the world. He meets this uh this this pretty young thing right here. Um, you know, and you know, and he's he's getting these women off of Tinder. So for those of you that have not been with us long or did not listen to the podcast before we decided to go live. My wife and I met on Tinder. You know, I was definitely, uh, you know, I came up in the in the online dating era. Probably, I would call us first generation online daters. I, I would say that. Matter of fact, no, I'll call us second generation because uh, you know you got Black Black Planet and all types of other pages before then. You had those little forms. So I would call us online dating 2.0 because this is my generation is when we started getting like the apps and stuff like that. Um, I was on Tinder, uh, Plenty of Fish. Uh, what was the other ones? It was mainly Tinder and Plenty of Fish for me. I was on what was it? Black. Um, what? There, there's so many. There's so many like Bumble. I was never on Bumble, but um, there's so many like dating apps out there now. No, I was not on uh, Christian Mingle. <laughs> Because I wasn't one back then, but I, from some of the things that I heard back in the day. You got farmers only. <laughs> you got dating You got dating sites for everything. But either way, that's besides the point. So the missus and I started um, dating online. And, you know, of course, you know, swipe right and all this other stuff. You know, but there are certain rules to online dating. And these went, well... This woman right here kind of did not follow any of them. Actually, most of the women didn't. You know, she followed the first one, so to speak. And the first rule of online dating is, well, that's not really the first rule. Of course, the for first rule is you got to you gotta match. You got to, you know, that's not really hard. But, um, but really, the first rule of online dating is you got to you got to create a you got to create a, a foundation first before you even meet the person. You got to create a foundation. And by foundation, I mean text. You got to get off the app. And I don't mean like delete your your um your profile or anything, but you got to get the conversation off the app. You got to if you're if Tinder is your is your weapon of choice. All right. As soon as you make that that initial connection and then y'all start chatting. OK, cool. Then you want to exchange numbers. You want to get off of the uh, the app with that person. You want to start exchanging text messages. And from text messages, you go to phone calls. And then from phone calls, this is key. You got to do FaceTime. I don't understand how almost every cell phone, prepaid, um, go phone, pay-as-you-go phone, burner phone, most of these phones have face cameras on them. So you can FaceTime me. I don't really care to FaceTime. I rather because I'm more. I like intimate connection. I like being face to face. Now, of course, you know, I I FaceTime with my with my babies because, you know, they're in another state. You know, I, I'm in another state. So and plus they're like they're in their teens. So FaceTiming is what they do. So when they face they're they're really the only two that I FaceTime. My wife will FaceTime me from time to time. You know, but we live together. So, you know, nine times out of 10, she FaceTime me is either because something funny just happened or she's with someone and they want to say hi to me or she's out shopping and she wants my approval or what I think on something. So that's pretty much it. Um, I'm not a big FaceTimer, but you got to FaceTime. You got it because in this whole cat, I don't understand why Catfish is still a show because <laughs> in in the era of Catfish, you should be able to get there's no excuse why you don't have some sort of camera device. Most of us don't have we're not really operating off computers anymore. Like, you know, back in the day when you actually needed a webcam, you got a webcam on your phone. So that's that's part one. You got to get the facial recognition because trust me, I've been catfished before. It is funny. Um, but, you know, that that's a story for a different day. So. Once you get once you establish, all right, the text game is good, the 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 verbal game is okay, and then now you're over here FaceTiming this person or Skyping, Zooming. I mean, I uh well, when I was a teen, well, in my late teens, early 20s, it was Uvu. 
So you uvu them, even though when I was a teenager during the uh, online dating 2.1, you had AIM, uh, it, like all that stuff. But damn, I'm showing my age. <laughs> um, but you got to get the face to face before you even waste time going out with them. And you can learn a lot about a face to face. You know, um, if you're really paying attention on a FaceTime, like you can really scope out their surroundings, you know, you know, you can scope out who they're around, what their environment looks like, sort of kind of. There's not too many people. I mean, of course, you know, your hands only but so far, so you're not going to be able to see so much, but you can kind of get a feel for where that person is in their environment. That's if you're really paying attention. If you're not paying attention, it'll go over your head. So once you get past, once you get to the face to like the FaceTime, now it's time for the real face to face. And that goes into rule two, because I'm going to, I'm going to actually, I'm going to make that rule three because rule one is, all right, you got to make the connection, start the conversation. Rule two is, all right, you started the conversation. You got to have different conversations, text, phone calls, FaceTime. Boom. That's rule two. Rule three. Rule three is. The face-to-face date. You got to make the face-to-face date. Now, this is where the chick, she went straight from rule one to rule three. You got to, you meet out in public. You go to a public place. You go, you know, you go to a place where, you know, because people are crazy. And especially in this whole, um, in this era where we got people abducting people and all types of other stuff. You male or female, you don't want to bring somebody back to your domicile. You don't want no, 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 no. Um, you do not bring somebody that you just met back to the place where you lay your head because that or a place where you're staying because things can get crazy really fast. Um, yeah, I've heard horror stories and I've experienced some. So, um, yeah. But um, so what you want to do is all right, you want to go out on. A date, and I, you don't even want to call it a date because you're. I mean, you can call it a date for all intents and purposes. Let's just call it a date. It's a date. All right. So you want to go somewhere where you can have intimate conversation. So then that's going to, you know, coffee shop. You want to go out somewhere that involves food because food is a very communal and bonding thing for people. You know, families bond over meals. You get to know someone in an intimate setting, and you get to know some. You get to get a glimpse into someone's habits, you know, or if they're, I hate to say it, or are they not, if they have etiquette or not, if you really care about that thing, you know, because trust me, I've been on dates with people and I got people in my family, like when they chew, oh my God, it gets on my goddamn nerves. Like it's, it's, it, it bothers me, you know, some people have that. You know, that that the, the whole smacking and the, you know, stuff like that. You know, you want to go somewhere. I, I would say preferably your first place will be it's so cliche. Go to a coffee shop because it's really all it is, is you have coffee, you have a beverage, you know, don't go to a bar. Don't go to a club. You want to go someplace that's calm. You want to go to someplace that's chill. It's not really you don't want to up the sexy level yet. You want to get to this is a get to know you place and preferably during the day, you know, during a lunch break, you know, especially for people like me who work in the city. You know, you can go to Starbucks, you can go to any sort of cafe, get yourself a quick coffee and say, hey, you know, and that's that's a quick thing, especially if you if y'all are connecting in the same general area, especially city cities are very easy. Just say, hey. Uh, I plan on going on my lunch break around what such and such a time. Would you like to meet me for coffee? You know, quick little 30 minutes, hour, whatever. Boom. Got your coffee. Got your conversation. All right, cool. You part ways. You can still, you can kind of still keep a little bit of mystery about you because you don't want to dive too deep in. Then you go to 3.1 or 3.2, which is an actual like meal, you know, uh, you want to actually sit down and have a meal with these people. You want to have like go out to you can either go out to lunch or you can go out to dinner. Either way, it doesn't matter. You know, you want to have more intimate conversation then. But for my fellas, I would not prescribe you to take them anywhere fancy because too often my young lads, 
my young lads will get out here and they'll try to woo and wine and dine the pants off of a female and they can't maintain that. So just go to a, a general spot. And, and this is where the conversation is important. Get to know what her favorite meal is. Get to know, you know, what kind of cuisine that she likes. Take her there. Now, if she's out here talking about, I want Ruth Chris, I want Maggiano's, I want Fogo the Child, then you be like, uh -uh, I'll take you to Outback. You know, if you like steak, we'll go to Outback. You know, like something like that. You know, you don't want to start up here because strange thing about women, most women, because as my wife would say, nah, -uh, that's not me. But most women is you can't start high and then backtrack. You know, you got to start you got to start in a in a in a lane that you can maintain for a long period of time. You know, me and my wife, me and my wife, we did not go into any fancy dates. We we went on fancier dates later on, but we went to like places like just, you know, out to eat, went to the movies, you know, movies are more when you go when you're a little bit more comfortable with each other. When you don't need to talk, you just enjoying each other's presence. So, boom, do a movie or you do something fun. Uh, then as you're progressing and getting to know this person, and of course, I, uh, you know, my Bibles are tucked away at the corner of my desk. We're not talking about anything biblical right now. If you want to engage into something a little bit more intimate, possibly physical, then it's time for a nightcap. You've already established rapport with this person. You know, now you want a nightcap. That's when you bring them back to either your place go back to their place but this is like after something has been established you have more rapport with this person if you so choose or if you still want to go the safe route and you want to spend a little bit of bread you take them to a hotel not no motel because you know only you only take prostitutes and side chicks to motels so <laughs> you take them to a hotel if you're not if you're not feeling comfortable yet with bringing them back to your house so which you know um yeah back in my back nah i'm not gonna go there i'm not gonna go there you know what yeah i'm gonna go there you know back in my in my more freer i don't want to say that freer days and back in my non and back in my single non-married non-dating days you know back when i was dating multiple women there was only a select select lineup of women that made it back to casa de edmo that there's only a, a handful and those are women that i've been dating for a while i was seeing for a while you know i was comfortable with you know the ones that i knew weren't going to just pop up you know those are the ones that you know though and it, yeah so you know so the, yeah you don't I, that's just my personal um uh, that's my personal uh rule well not anymore because i'm married but when i was dating my personal rule was i don't bring randoms back to the crib no. And even when I'm when I'm advising, you know, the young lads out there, I say, hey, do not bring randoms back to your house because it will go sideways fast, especially if you give her the best ride that she's had in a long time and it goes to her head and she gets possessive and then boom, she just thinks she's your girlfriend and she wants to pop up. You're, you're asking for a bad day. So but that's for a different episode that I'm probably going to. That I'm going to do. But remember, these are Edmo's rules to uh, online dating. So this girl, this this pre this PYT right here, she just jumped straight from from all right, connecting coffee date or a date to jet setting and sex. All within like well, the jet setting, well, meeting and then sex all within 24 hours. All within 24 hours. Now, I'm not going to go on this woman too hard. I'm not. Because uh, because life is having its way with her right now. But I'm pretty sure after this documentary, you know, things are getting a lot better for her. So, but I'm going to use her as to talk about women in general. As I stated before, for my young lads, you don't want to go too big too soon. You don't want to sit here. And, do not rent a car. To go pick up a chick unless, she, you know, yeah, don't, don't, I mean, hell, the ladies man was like, uh, my car does not exist. You know, if you don't have a car, the worst thing you can do is lie. That is the worst thing you can do. I like, do not lie to these women. Plus, uh, this is going to sound very chauvinistic, 
there's too many women out here for you to be lying to one or many. It, don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy out here wait, lying to women. It because if you lie to her, then it, it's you got to remember the lie. And especially if you're dating multiple women and you're lying to all of them, you got to remember all these different lies and stuff like that, which this guy ends up doing. But he had a whole team. He had a whole team lined up. You know what? Where is that tweet? Yeah. You know, every man has a wingman. Every man has a wingman. And this dude right here, he is, uh, I think his name was Peter. He is the king of all wingmans. Because the, the because this dude, let me see. Do, it, do they have his picture up? Let me see. Where is it? So this guy, he's the tender swindler. And this is his wingman right here. This dude, he was the guy bagging all these chicks. And as soon as things, and the way that he would scam women out of out of uh, out of their money, or not out of their money, but just out of money, he would send them a text saying, "Hey, Peter's been hurt. Um, I, I have enemies. My enemies found me. You know." And then he'll go ghost, or he doesn't go ghost. He'll stay in communication with these women. And of course, like women, they'll meet Peter because that's his bodyguard a.k.a. wingman, and then they'll form rapport with Peter. And then once Peter gets hurt, it sparks that caring factor in women. Oh, my God, Peter's hurt. Is everything okay? And then, you know, I, I got to give it to him. I got to give it to him. Dude has, like, yeah, dude, dude swindled women out of out of some serious bread. And then what he would do is, once he started the scam, he would, once he started the whole Peter's been hurt thing, what he would do is he would say, hey, I can't use my credit cards. They're tracking me. They're tracking my credit cards. I need you to, um, I need you to send me money. And they're like, how much money do you need? Well, I need, I need cash. Like I need a couple thousand dollars. Then it would get into, all right, you got to open these accounts. I'll make you an employee of my business. You got to open this. You got to get these. You got to get that. And then boom. But it's all in their name. And then once he gets the cash, he's using the cash to spend on another woman. Hey. I should not be condoning this, but hey, I mean, what can I say? And of course, you know, it's Europe. It's 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 not America. You know, for whatever reason, like money just keep flowing over there and. So dude ends up getting caught because he pissed off, you know, he pissed off uh, this, where, where's her face at? He pissed her off. And then, of course, she's sitting here getting, getting ran down by all the creditors and debtors and stuff like that. Then she gets in connection with the other woman that you, with the other two women. And one of them, the dark, you know, this dude had a type, but the one girl, let me see. Uh, crap. We don't, you can find them. I get these threatening messages. So, uh, crap, why do I? Let me see if I can't, I can't rewind it. Let's see. So her, this woman right here, she was actually dating him the longest. She was with him for like, ye like almost two years. Let me see. So, and this woman... This was the woman who he tried to scam as a romantic relationship, but she was like, you know what? I'm not really into you like that because you're short. This is the first time I've ever heard, you know, the whole six, the six foot rule working in a woman's favor to get her, but she didn't get out of the scam. She ended up, the, she ended up hanging out with the guy and then he ends up spending money on her and he scammed her the exact same way. Exact same way. <laughs> Got her to care for him as a friend, not as a romantic interest, but as a friend. Got him, got her to care for him as a friend, and then scammed her ass too. But the 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 brunette, let me see, let me go back. I'm trying to find her a good picture of her face. 
Her. Yes, this is a perfect picture. Her right here in the middle. She is the queen of them all. Because once she got hit, all from an article, once she got hit to it, she scammed him back. But she reached out to these two women and was like, before I do anything, I before I, I help you, I got I to gotta do something first. She scammed him out of everything. Oh, my goodness. Ain't... You know what? And that's that's that goes back to that, you know, hell has no fury like a woman scorned. But this documentary, oh my god. I loved it. I loved it. It will have you on the edge of your seat. It will have you like I don't think you could do that in America. I I mean, catfish, they had some instances where it was kind of like that, but I, you couldn't really do it to this degree. You couldn't do it to this level in America. I'm sorry. I think that's only uh a non-American thing where, you know, that, that whole socialism, you know, I don't know. Cause he was scamming the hell out of them. I, 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 I'm not condoning it, but damn if, and who, mm. and who knows if he's still doing it, who knows? I have no clue, but it's dude. So it's Valentine's day, ladies. And the one thing that the one thing I want to say about this is like as soon as soon as like they they had a they had a, an actor in some of the they had theatrical parts in it they had reenactments and once I once they kind of once they kind of described rest the restaurants and stuff like that I was like mm, hypergamy in effect you know and and that's what women don't seem to understand and i'm not bashing women but because not all women are like this but what i will say is hypergamy is a mother for y'all like and it, it it's it it kind of baffles my mind and then now i kind of hit the missus to it because of course like she's thinking about it as a woman but until like her and i really started talking about you know male and male and female dynamics and the dance that is dating and relationships and courtship and all this other stuff i had to explain to her like the tables are turning now because for a long time the tables were were in the woman's were in women's favor but the issue is this female empowerment this female ladder system is now at the point where the ladder is starting to break the 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 studs ain't holding together no more and women are starting to fall off of that ladder because They'll get so high up on the ladder, you know, they'll go from one dude, to the next dude, then they'll monkey branch dudes. And then the higher you go in men, the more the more you'll get played because, well, I don't want to say played, but high, I don't even want to say high value because now you got all these, you got all these little online wars about high value and this and that and ugh, it, it, i'm gonna stay in my lane when you start getting with dudes who have money and actually have looks or you know they when you have guys that have the resources that you're trying to get because let's the the basis of female nature is resources you want security to get resources i don't care that's all women don't care who you are because you don't see women, too many women out here with a homeless broke dude. You'll see a lot of women out here with broke dudes, but that's for more emotional reasons. Or he got a really good stroke game or something like that. But once you see women trying to climb the economic ladder, we know they're trying to get the guys to have that are driving the nice cars. Because you, you, when you see dudes and then they, they want to get to the next guy and then the next guy. And that's why you have these basketball wives or these celebrity girlfriends you know, these women who are not celebrities, they didn't make it on their own. They just made it by their looks Why they keep dating in these circles. But then they all got the same story. Oh, I got cheated on. I got this. I got that. Hell, Dr. Dre's wife. She left a baseball player making millions for Dr. Dre. And then she left Dr. Dre and she's trying to take money. Like these women will come in. They'll, they'll play the game. They'll play the relationship game. And then they'll take money and then try to go on to the next one. You know, this is not to bash women, but this is just stating observations facts and reality you know these women got conned because of the lifestyle these women got conned because of their hypergamy i'm not calling them gold diggers because 
it's not like they were saying, I need a man that's making X amount of dollars. They go, oh, he's traveling. Boom. He's in exotic places. Boom. He wears fancy clothes. Boom. He drives fancy cars. Boom. He does things that are outside the norm. Boom. All these things are, are these are checklists in their minds. And I, I don't know how many times I hear women sit here and say, I, I want to travel. As soon as they see a dude that travels, boom, they're on him like stink on a skunk. As soon as they see a dude that's in these lifestyles that are of an elevated nature, you know, you're seeing fancy cars, you're seeing helicopters, jets, planes, stuff like that. Boom. Once you see luggage and certain kinds of clothing brands, boom, all these things are signaling in these women's mind. Oh, resources, security. I can get with that. And then their whole and then they'll be tricked into actually being sexually attracted to that person, even though most times you'll find that they're not really even sexually attracted to these men. But it's the lifestyle. But of course, movies will have you thinking that these billionaire playboys, that these billionaire, good looking, suave, you know, type dudes, there's not many of them out there. Most, the, the young millionaire, there's not really, I mean, outside of YouTube and entertainment, and there's not many of them. And most of these dudes don't really, like Kevin Samuel says, their money comes differently, you know, but they think they got this idea that a lot of them are like that. Most men who have money are older. Most men who have money are about their money. They're not, you know, yeah, they may do things every once in a while, but it's not an all the time thing. And that's what I keep saying, you know, to when I see women getting fluted, uh, getting flown out to Bahamas, Caribbean, I mean, the Caribbean, uh, Europe, all these other places. I'm like, you're just a whole with, you're just a hoe with a plane ticket. That's pretty much it. You're, you're being flown out. You're being wine and dine because the wine and the dine will get some panties off of you. It'll get something or what or what it, some high, some highly high functioning dudes will do is, OK, great. You're not sleeping with me, but cool. I'm going to take pictures with you because now all that's doing is that's helping my social currency. That's helping my sexual currency because women are also very competitive because, oh, I see this dude with an attractive woman. Well, she's not as good as me, you know, it, like. Taking pictures with beautiful women helps you get beautiful women. You see, like, <laughs> like I, but women don't think on this level like that. You know, that that's like because women don't think like men do. They don't because you, if you go out and you take a picture with the rock, most men ain't gonna be like, oh, okay, <laughs> let me see if I can get it. I look better than the rock. You ain't got the rocks money. You ain't got the rocks time attention. And then, of course, what most dudes got to fall back on is, okay, I bet you can't fuck it like I can. I, I you know, I, I, I got that magic stick. Okay, whatever. <laughs> you know, men and women are different. Women are very competitive when it comes to men. You know, once you get a man that has a certain lifestyle that you want, you know, you will try to knock a chick out to get to that. And uh, you got to go watch movies because they had a perfect scene so some things that women say that they won't do in real life they will actually do when the circumstances are right you know when some woman will say well uh yeah I, I don't like sharing but then you don't mind being the side chick to someone who either has money or who bangs you out real good you see what i'm saying women will concede when they're getting what they want if they're getting something that they want they don't mind being the side chick. They don't mind being the sneaky link. They don't mind until they are tired of their position and they want a promotion. So just saying, just saying. Um, yeah, this movie was amazing. Like it, this docuseries was amazing. You know, it, again, this is not really to bash women, but this is supposed this should be a cautionary tale to women like. Be careful for what you ask for and what you wish for. You know, I wouldn't wish this on on anybody. I wouldn't say my worst enemy, but you know, I, I think these women are probably after this documentary and how much how much viewing time it got. Oh, these I'm pretty sure these women are straight. I'm pretty sure these women are straight now. But these women and they're beautiful. They're beautiful women. Um, but again, that 
once once a man learns a system and he and he gets once a man learns the game and gets a strategy and a system in place, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, when like you don't women will sit here and say they'll call into all these shows and say, I want, and I'm gonna do an episode on this. I want what I call the demonic man. I want six, six, six. I want six figures, six feet, six pack, or six inches, because I've seen both. You know, they want the six, six, six package. They want the demon package. But what these women don't understand is you're not the only one that wants that. And once men get a system, what I'm not six foot, but if you got six feet, boom. All right, now you can make six figures. All right. But six, you know, if you got two out of the three, it's it's a wrap. It is a wrap, you know, especially if you get a system in place. And this dude had a had a damn near flawless system, you know, because he was he was painting. He was giving these women the imagination that he was a multimillionaire, you know, and he was living that multimillionaire movie lifestyle. You know, where he's flying jets, driving fancy cars, doing all whining and dining, finessing and finagling and oh, quote unquote business deals. So, I mean, and then the woman's just like, oh, wow. You know, the same girl that says uh, she doesn't she doesn't have sex on the first night, having sex on the first night. You know, it, like <laughs> it, I'm sorry, women. Like this is not I don't want to bash you, but this is true. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry. So many, the you know. Us, come on, guys, guys who are watching this, we all know the chick that says she is not having sex on Instagram. Oh, I, I don't want to have sex. I, I'm not interested. I want to have a connection. Those are the main chicks that put out on the first night. The ones that said they don't do. I hate to say it. They do. You know, I, I've seen it. I've experienced it. It's. Yeah. And I'm sorry, ladies, but it's. You got to. You got to You got to have some you got to you got to have some systems in place. I you know, I don't I don't like seeing people get played. I don't like seeing people get scammed, you know, and I got so caught up in this conversation that I forgot to give our two sponsors. So many of us struggle with credit at some point in our lives. I know I have. If you have a 400 to 699 credit score and want an increase, I have connections that can legally erase negative things like repos, foreclosures, late payments, medical bills, student loans, evictions, and much more. Just contact my friend, Michael Stanley Jr., the Credit Savage, at 717-609-4829 and text the word credit. You'll get amazing results. And my last sponsor, if you're suffering from acne and dark spots like I do, or you just want a deep clean and a wax. <laughs> it was Valentine's Day. Contact, well, you're probably late now, but contact my friends at New Skin Cosmetics where you are guaranteed a certified esthetician. Esthet yeah, esthetician. I don't know why I get tongue-tied on that word. Uh, they, I'm lucky that they're my friends. Uh, and all natural products with no chemicals. Just text 202 507 But yeah. Ladies, like now, of course, as the missus, you know, she would say, well, money ain't everything. And uh, not me, of course, you know, but you're always going to have the not me girls. And this is not me throwing throwing shade at my at my beautiful wife. But, you know, you got the not me girls. The not me girls were the you girls. I'm just saying most of the not me girls were the girls that got caught up at one point in time or. They they felt they 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 got the the demon package and they didn't like the demon package and they got wiser. But trust me, trust me, trust me. Unless, unless like you, unless you, <laughs> most of these girls, unless you from a small town. Actually, I can't even say that. I can't even. I cannot say that either. But most likely, unless you're a virgin and you've grown up in a church and you got a or you grown up in synagogue or mosque or whatever, and you know you got an arranged marriage, or you've been dating someone since middle school, and y'all destined to be married. Like most of y'all have been through this, 
you know. And if you haven't, it's either because your looks ain't up there. I hate to say it, but even, you know, even ugly women get played. Or well, I shouldn't call them ugly. Most women who are not, who are facially challenged get played. Or bodily challenge get played. But, and especially when, <clears throat> you know, me and, me and the missus thing is, we love watching relationship shows. We love watching uh, reality dating shows. And I see the same formula play over and over and over again. You know, especially women of color, for the most part, my, brown, black women. Uh, I don't really see this too much from Spanish women. I do see it, but not as much. I typically see it from white women and black women. When they get around to do the first thing they ask, what do you do? If she asks, what do you do within like the first couple minutes? Don't even, don't even dignify her with a response. You know, that the, what do you do question is later on when you actually get to know someone. You don't just come up to someone and say, and when you're whining and dining them, they go, oh, my name is such and such. And what about, tell me about yourself. What do you do? It's a trap. It's a trap. Don't do it. Tell her, look, baby. Yes, I am a janitor. Say it. Say it very snarky, very sarcastically. Because what you're doing is you're putting her on the spot and making her look like the B-T-Y-T-C-H that she is about to look like. Because it's crazy. Like, no, if, if you're here, if you're here for an actual relationship, if you're here for actual connection, what I do should be secondary. It should be. If you're looking for a genuine connection, if you're looking for a good time or if you're looking for a suitor or or a sugar daddy or, you know, someone to, to put you on the, in their Rolodex, then cool. I'll answer that. But if you're sitting here saying that you are really here for a real connection, men, do not answer that. Really, like, t say something off the wall. Be like, yes, I am a community sanitarian. <laughs> like, so you got you to gotta say something like off the wall. Like, say, uh, yes, I am a career student. Say, because one, humor will always... Humor will always, humor and wit will always work. And first of all, and, and what that does is that also protects you as men, because trust me, you will get, especially if you are a well-to-do man, if you are an up and coming man, if you are a man that is on, on his, on his rise, especially men that are in their late twenties, early thirties and stuff like that. Like you are in your career, you're progressing and stuff like that. You know, you're moving, but the money just isn't there yet, but you have a good lifestyle for yourself. You got a roof over your head, car in your car, in your driveway or in your parking dock. You know, you got a place of your own, you pay your bills. What you do should not matter. You know, if she's looking for a real connection and that'll also signal to you that she's full of streets. She full of streets. You treat her like one, as my daddy would say. You know, if, if she fold the streets, she fold the streets. You do not turn, do not turn a, a 304 into a housewife. You don't. Do not turn a 304 into a housewife. You just don't do that. You know, if she's if she leads with what do you do, or if she leads with what she does, she fold the streets. She's very masculine. Leave her alone. You know, she 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 can be for a good time, but not a long time. You know, like. Trust me, uh, me. It. That's why I'm. I'm glad I'm out the game. I'm glad I'm out the game. I'm so glad I got my beautiful wife because my wife met me when I had nothing. I had just lost everything. As you guys know, I was married, and then I, during that time, I was divorced, and I was living on my dad's couch. I lost everything. I was living off of my savings. One of my friends had wrecked one of my cars. I had just wrecked one of my cars because I was like, I lost everything. And luckily, you know, my wife is patient enough. She's intentional enough to really engage in who I am. You know, she asked, she asked me really intentional questions, not what I do. She asked me, where do I want to be? And like, what do I want to attain in life? That's more important than what I do right now. You know, because what I did at that time, I was jobless. I was, I had 
was killing bugs. I was, you know, like I was doing anything to get money in my pocket. And then finally, over the years, she stuck it out with me. And then now we got a beautiful house together. We got multiple cars. We got money in the bank. She's living great. You know, she's living a lot better than some of these chicks out here chasing that 666 package, still living at home with their mama or their sister or their auntie and or they got uh, Ill illegitimate kids running around. My wife is living good. You know, and, and that is all because my wife was very intentional. Some of these women are just... They are intentional about the wrong things. They're intentional about their ego. They're intentional about what they can get out of the deal. You know, it, it, I never would have thought that that in, in my late 20s, I would hit. This is not me bragging, but this is I never would have thought in my late 20s that I would have. If you would have told me at 24 when I got out of the military, I'm going through a divorce I'm packing up my 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 place. I just found out that um, I couldn't reenlist because of because of downsizing. I'm looking for jobs back home. I'm looking for jobs in California. Then I had to make that call to my dad and say, "Hey, I'm coming home, and I need a place to stay." You, if you would have told me at 24 that, hey, at, at 20 at 28, 29, you'll hit six figures. At 27 you'll hit six figures at 27. You'll be able to buy a house. And I would not have believed you. I would not because I was so underwater. Like I, I did not know how I was going to be able to do that, but because I had great people in my circle, especially my wife, because she was, she was also a, a very good driving force in that. You know, because I had to relearn this civilian world again, because what I knew was 15 to the 15 to the 15. You know, the, I, I learned I was about military. I was about chain of command and all this other stuff. My mind was completely different back then. So, like, if you would have told me at 24 that I would hit six figures at 27 and a couple years later, I would have not believed you. I would not have believed you if you told me I was going to get my own house. I wouldn't believe you if you if you would have told me I was going to pay my car off. I would not have believed you. I would not have believed any of these things. But and no, I at those times when I first hit six figures, I did not have I don't have a sexy job. Now I do, but I didn't have a sexy job. That was just through hard work. I was putting in hours, 16 hour days, six days a week. I still put in hours, 16 hours a day. More than that, especially now that with the podcast and everything, I'm putting in more hours. So, ladies, like if you're chasing these fancy cars, jets, and all this other stuff, you are really missing. I don't want to call myself a diamond and rough, but you're really missing the diamond package. These are the guys that are grinding. These are the guys that are growing. These are the guys that are intentional, that are moving with a purpose. You're missing out on these guys because. You already got your eyes set on the finish line. And you want to run a sprint and these guys are running marathons. You want to get these. You're looking at the ball players, the rappers, the the YouTubers, the the TikTokers. You're looking at these dudes that are getting the fast money. You're getting you're looking at the at the five year nobodies and the one and the overnight success. And these are the guys that are putting in work like me. Putting in work now to look like an overnight success later, like the Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels was out for five for five years before he hit it big. He was out for a long time before he became who he is. So, a lot of these women are looking at these dudes at the finish line, and they're not looking at the guys that are just running. And a lot, of, a lot of times, because they don't really respect these guys. But you know, you'll end up like these ladies. And I don't wish that on you. I just hope, you know, you ladies are moving with intention. But, Bernie, what do we got? I am once again asking for your financial support. Thank you, Bernie. We are asking for your financial support. So if you guys can please help our friends out, visit um, visit our friends over at FTI, visit our friends over at the Credit Savage, and visit our friends over at New Skin Cosmetics. But if you want to help us directly, well, you can stop past the Teespring store and get yourself a nice Edmo Show coffee mug. Oh, because we only drink out of the finest receptacles. 
Um, you guys can also go, you guys want to help out the show, you guys can go to our PayPal and donate however much is in your heart, as long as it's not your lonely bottom crusty dollar. If you are down to your lonely bottom crusty dollar, please, wherever you get, please like the content, share the content. If you're listening to this on the podcast, especially if you're listening listen to this on iTunes, gives us five stars um, and write a nice little comment. Or if you guys are on YouTube or Instagram, please share the content with as many people as you can. Please. I want you to get flagged because you're sharing this content so much. Please help us because so that way, the more you help us, the more we can help you with better content, better information, and who knows what else later on down in the future. So until then, I will see you guys later. Peace out.